Once you have watched SRP Player 1 video, you should be all set up for to import your STL from SOLIDWORKS. Um, so you will save your SOLIDWORKS file as an STL, just like you would if you were going to 3D print. I'm just going to check a couple preferences on my machine here. Uh, so before, uh, don't forget, if you do not see a red axis line through your screen like so, you may need to go to File Preferences and check Rotary Axis and ATC. ATC stands for Automatic Tool Changer, which is what we have that makes things go very smoothly and we don't have to change the tools in between uh, features. So I'm just going to click Apply, so now you see that red axis there, and click OK. So now we are ready to open the STL. So I can click Open. We will be working over here on the right side of the screen. Notice that there's five tabs, numbered one through five. So I will click Open, and I will navigate to where I saved the STL. So we want to look for an STL file right now, or we can look at all files, but I'm going to bring in this controller. And there we have it. Now, once we uh, bring our STL in, we can see the actual size. So this controller by Ni nee Yartley is actually 7.0399 by 4.9292 by 0.5 inches. So you can see the actual size of what it will end up being when it's done being machined. So once we have that set, I can go to type of milling. And this is where we want to set some parameters, such as we, if we were just making a very rough prototype, we could choose faster cutting time, but we want these to be pretty nice when we're done. So I'm going to choose better finished surface. Next is, does it have a lot of flat planes or curved surfaces? Now, while this does have some curves right here, it's talking about contour curves. So if this, this is a flat surface across the top, the bottom of the holes are flat, uh, they're 90 degrees to the walls of the holes. We would choose many flat planes here. Next, we want to choose, do we want to cut, do we have a cylindrical workpiece? Do we have a block workpiece? And do we want to cut top or cut top and bottom? So we have a block, so we want to choose block workpiece. And we will choose to cut both the top and the bottom. The pink uh, features you see here on the screen are actual support material. We do need to add support material. So if you do not see the pink blocks, you must check this box, Add Support Model. Now, we do not want the supports to go through our object like we see here. Okay. Now, you can rotate by clicking your left mouse click button down and rotating the mouse, and it will rotate around. You can also do it with the right. The right will spin it from side to side. So we don't want these going through our holes. So we can edit the support model material. Now to do this, we want to grab our four support pieces here. And we will pull them to the outside. You can change views, so we're looking at the top. I'm going to look at the top, so I will drag these out to the outside. Notice you want them just touching, just touching the edge. As long as there is not a gap, there won't be any problems. So now right there you have a gap, so we'd want to bring this back in. And that looks pretty good to me. Now if you have features out here on the outside that you want to avoid having to cut the support material away, then you can move these around. And once we have those positioned, we will hit apply. You can also change the size. Right now they are a quarter of an inch by a quarter of an inch, which is a pretty good size. So now we can see that our support model supports do not go through our interior features, which are the holes. And we can move on to step three, which is create the toolpath. 
This is the most important part of the process. And the first thing we want to do is choose the correct material. So this right now is set to ABS, which is a plastic. We will, of course, be cutting walnut, which is a wood. And we want to use wood, and walnut is a hardwood, so we're going to use wood hard. Okay? Now this is telling us the size of the piece of material we need to put into the machine in order for there to be enough safety room on each end. Okay, so the piece that we have to put in needs to be at least 10.6647 by 4.9292. Now if you remember, if we go back to number one, this is the actual size of our piece when it will be done. So notice that we need to add about three and a half inches to the actual piece of stock we will put in. So I'm just going to round this up to 11 and this to 5 and I'm going to make this 0.5. As long as these numbers are equal to or greater than the numbers you see in parentheses, everything will be great. Once you get to Z and you type in the thickness, you have to hit the tab key on your keyboard and that will activate the toolpath editor. It also gives you a preview of the actual stock you will put in so that the box, the rectangular prism that you see is actually, that is the 11 by 5 by 0.5 piece that the controller piece here will be cut out of. There are safety zones that are built into, so you can't put an actual smaller piece in here. This is the size we want. So now we will go to create toolpath. And I'm going to show you. So notice that we're cutting on the top and we're cutting on the bottom, just like we set up back here, cut top and bottom. And so with that, we have a roughing and a finishing pass on the top and the bottom. So four four different cutting uh, features here, cutting functions. And right now it is it has chosen the eighth inch square tool to do all four of those. I'm going to go ahead and just show you what happens uh, when we hit the create tool path. While it is doing this, it will calculate the feeds and speeds and how long it's going to take and where it's going to cut we're going to be able to see a preview of what it will look like when it's done, which is very important to make sure that we get the cutting that we do want. The more complex the part, the longer this process takes. Now that it has calculated the entire cutting, we can notice that four and five preview results and perform cutting are now activated. So if we go to pre preview re uh, cut results, it tells us that it's going to take estimated time of 14.2 hours to cut this little piece of wood out. That's a long, long time. Now, we don't want to do that, so there's some things that we can do to adjust our time and make it cut faster but still have quality. But first of all, I want you to click this preview cutting, and that will actually show us how it will cut. So there's the first roughing pass. And then there's the second roughing pass, and then the finishing pass you may not be able to really see very well on the preview here, but notice that it cuts the shape out in what we expect it to. Here are your supports, which you will remove uh, with a bandsaw or a handsaw when you're done. Okay, so we can see it does cut the way we want it to. However, 14.2 hours is a long time. Nobody has time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that, okay? So we're going to go back into Create Toolpath. You're probably looking at around, if anything is over three hours, we need to. We maybe need to have chat. Um, but sometimes it does take three hours. Um, if it's around one to two, probably good. So there's some ways we can speed this up. All right, so roughing... And to do that, let me start there first, to do that, to edit the toolpaths, you go into this edit button here. You can do this before you hit create toolpath, by the way. You don't have to create the toolpath and see how long it's going to take and then go back. You can just start right away and go right into edit. 
So here is our roughing pass. It shows us all the tool paths. Notice there's the finishing. Then the other roughing is on the bottom, or it flips it over and shows it's the bottom. And there is our finishing. Now if we expand these, like if we expand roughing one, we see that we get eighth inch square. That's our tool. Roughing is taking off uh, more material, and it's not too worried about the quality of the, the cut, the quality of the finish. All right, that's going to come back with the finishing pass. So with our roughing, we can actually look at taking more material out uh, initially. And so what I like to do is I like to use a bigger tool to do roughing. So I'm going to change, so if I click on eighth inch square, notice it brings up tools to use for this process. I'm going to change that to one quarter inch square. I'm going to click apply. It's going to, it's going to tell you some warning. Uh, just click OK on those. And then I'll go down to my roughing as well. I'm going to change that eighth inch square to quarter inch square. Again, apply yes and OK. And I'm going to close. And you can see in our tool list, it's changed roughing one and two to quarter inch square. So when I change that, you need to recreate the toolpath. So I will click that button again. And it has created our toolpath. So we can look at preview results. We're still at 12.9 hours. That's quite a long time. Okay. So there's, and this is the, this is the key to really speeding up the process and you still get a good finish. And that is, we're going to go back into edit. And this time we're going to look at our finishing cuts. So finishing one and finishing two. We are not going to change the tool. We are going to keep it at the smaller tool. But what we are going to change is the cutting parameters. So cutting parameters. Okay, notice we have the feed rate, which we don't want to really play with. The spindle speed is how, how fast the spindle is spinning. So RPMs, 12,000 RPMs per minute. So it's spinning very quickly. But the next two are what we can look at. Cutting in amount and path interval. So the cutting in amount is the depth at which the tool goes into the material. The path interval is the overlap, like how much as it moving side to side, how much more is it taking off? Now notice they're both set to 0 0.0039, which is about 10 times smaller than a 32nd of an inch. A 32nd of an inch in decimal form is 0 .31, 0.03125. And so we're going to actually change these two cutting in amounts to 0 0.03 and 0 0.03. I'm going to click apply. Again, it's going to give you a warning that our settings have been changed. You want to make sure you do this on both finishing operations. So cutting in amount 0 0.03, path interval 0 0.03, and click apply and close. Again, we will create the toolpath, preview results. Oh, look at that, 2.2 hours. That is very manageable, very manageable. Let's go ahead and preview the cutting to make sure we still have a, the desired outcome of our shape and all the features are included, such as the holes. That's looking pretty, pretty good. That's the shape we want. Again, these are the supports. Obviously, these two at the end are the main ones. This is not going to hold anything on. So we can now save this file. From your computer, you do not want to perform the cutting because you're not hooked up to the machine. You need to be on a computer to actually that is actually connected to the MDX 540. And so we will just save this as whatever you would like to call it, hopefully your last name. And so this is an SBJ file. The SBJ file is what you will turn in on Schoology, and that will allow me to take that file and cut out your piece when uh, you're not here.